Hi everyone, this is Shantosh and you are watching my YouTube channel Microscopy for All. In my earlier videos, I talked about why do we need microscope, types of microscopes, where we all got an overall idea about different types of microscopes. In this video, let's start with optical or light microscopy, where we will learn about transmitted light illumination, components of bright field microscope and their functions. And lastly, we will see how to check color illumination in your microscope because this is very crucial before you start with your microscopy. Optical or light microscopes use visible light. What is visible light? Well, this is a small portion of electromagnetic spectrum which is visible to human eyes. Now, this visible light appears as white which is a combined light of individual rainbow colors ranging from 380 to 740 nanometer. Optical or light microscopes use system of glass lenses and use defined properties of light such as refraction, diffraction, reflection, etc. to generate a magnified image of small objects so that you can see it. Now transmitted light microscopy techniques were the first ones developed as the microscope was being developed. In this light microscopy technique, light is transmitted through the sample and then passes through the objective. In modern upright microscopes, the lamp house is attached to the base, whereas in inverted system, it is on the top. This is a cross section of light illumination train at the base of a upright microscope. Light emitted from the tungsten filament passes through the collector lens which is near to the lamp house and then through another lens called field lens which is near to the field diaphragm. Focused light leaving the field lens is reflected by a mirror positioned at 45 degree angle to the light path and passes through the field diaphragm and into the substage condenser. The collector lens and the field lens help to focus the image of a lamp filament onto the condenser aperture. What is the benefit of this arrangement? The light source is not focused directly on the specimen level. So, light at the specimen level is essentially grainless and extended. So, these two plans are called conjugate illumination plan. The field diaphragm over here serves as a virtual source of light for the microscope and its image is focused by the condenser onto the specimen level. So, these two plans are called conjugate image plans. The field diaphragm over here at the base of the microscope controls only the width of the bundle of the light rays reaching the condenser. Proper adjustment is important for preventing the glare that can reduce the contrast in the observed image. In case you open the field diaphragm too far, scattering light originating from the specimen will degrade the image quality. So, the elimination of the excess light is very important, particularly the samples with low, uh, inherently low contrast. There are many misconceptions regarding the function of the field diaphragm. Remember, field diaphragm does not affect the optical resolution, numerical aperture or the intensity of the illumination. In my next video, I will be talking on optical resolution and numerical aperture. Condenser now project a cone of light to illuminate the field of view in the sample. Parallel light rays that pass through and illuminate the sample are brought to focus at the back focal plane of the objective where the image of the uh, lamp filament, the condenser aperture diaphragm will be seen in focus and that is why these three planes are called conjugate planes. We have another aperture plane at the exit pupil over here uh, of the eyepiece which appears to uh, hang in a space few millimeter above of the eyepiece. This is simply the image of the illuminated rear aperture of the objective. So, all these four planes are conjugate illuminate, illumination plan. Now, the function of the condenser is to concentrate the light on the sample. Condenser is responsible for controlling the angle of the illuminating light cone, hence the numerical aperture of the condenser. Basically, the condenser is able to control 
the angle of the illumination which permits the right balance of resolution and the contrast in the microscope. You can see over here that once you open the aperture diaphragm, you can see the cone of the light that is illuminating your sample is increasing. So, correct adjustment of the substage condenser is probably the most critical aspect of achieving proper light illumination in sample. Unfortunately, condenser misalignment and improperly adjusted condenser aperture diaphragm are the main source of image degradation and poor quality of, uh, of image. After the light passes through the specimen, it goes through the objective lens and forms a real intermediate image which is near to the eyepiece or at the eyepiece diaphragm. Now, eyepiece, what does it do? It enlarges the small real intermediate image. Mainly, it functions as a magnifying glass for the intermediate image. And finally, the brain creates a virtual image with the help of photoreceptors in the retina and the optic nerves. And this we perceive as an image. In case you want to capture the image, so instead of going to the eyepiece, then light should go directly to the camera port, where intermediate image will be captured by the camera. So in camera, the image is magnified by objective only. Remember this point. So the illumination technique we learned today is uh, bright field microscopy. As the name describes, the bright background against which a high contrast image of the sample is created over here. Now, finally, we got two sets of interlaced conjugate plans, the field plans and illumination plan. All four image plans we can see when we look through the microscope, is not it? We can see field diaphragm over here. When we close it, we can see our samples. To see the illumination plans, we need a button lens or telescope lens. So what you have to do, you have to take your eyepiece out and look through it. The aperture plans are responsible for resolving power and the contrasting techniques, whereas the field plans contain images formed by the optical components of the microscope. So have you ever thought that these eight planes work together to get you the nice image? I hope now you will think next time when you will use your microscope. The illumination technique we discussed today was first described by August Kohler from Carl Zeiss Corporation in the late 18th uh, century as a method of providing the optimum specimen illumination. And this is still widely employed for modern microscopes even over 100 years later. The color illumination in brief, a collector lens in front of the lamp focus the image of the lamp on the front aperture of the condenser and the image of the field diaphragm focused on the specimen with the condenser focus control. This illumination technique is now adopted by all manufacturers of modern laboratory microscopes because it provides a grainless, bright and even illumination allowing the user to realize the microscope's full potential. Do you know that color illumination is one of the most misunderstood and often neglected concepts in optical microscopy? Well, it is no exaggeration to say that almost the entire art and the science of the microscopy depends on the correct use of the luminous field diaphragm and the condenser aperture diaphragm. The most critical parameter that must be fulfilled in order to achieve optimum performance of your microscope is the proper configuration of the microscope with regard to illumination. And uh, thankfully, there are simple rules for this. Now, we will learn how to correctly set the microscope for color illumination in few simple steps. So first, turn on the light and check the lamp. Either it fills the front aperture of the condenser or not. You can simply use a sheet of paper, place it in front of the condenser front aperture and see it. Then open the field diaphragm and condenser fully. And then try to adjust the condenser height. Remember, you need to bring the condenser as near as possible to your sample, maybe within one to two millimeter. Then place a uh, specimen 
and load a low power objective preferably 10x and focus the specimen using systems uh, fine and coarse adjustment knob then close down the field diaphragm and try to focus the angular outline of the diaphragm periphery using a condenser focusing knob now you will see if the condenser is not aligned with the light path if it is not in the proper uh, light path what you will find this field the image of the field diaphragm will be coming in the periphery not in the center so you have to do the condenser centering in next step so center the condenser using condensers two centration adjustment screws over here and you have to bring it in the center now open the field diaphragm just to accommodate the object or the field and then finally you have to adjust the condenser diaphragm while viewing through the objective rear aperture and you have to use in this case eyepiece telescope or barton lens so you have to open the condenser aperture almost uh, uh, three fourth uh, diameter so that remain that need to be uh, remain illuminated now proper understanding of these illumination planes this uh, image planes will help you to troubleshoot a microscope particularly for the contaminating dust fibers or imperfections in the optical frame suppose these artifacts are in short focus then you have to look for uh, near the surface that is part of the image forming set of conjugate planes what are these so that may be the glass elements at the microscope light port so from my opinion i will not suggest to put your hand into this you can call the engineer and get it done otherwise you can check the specimen the reticule in the ice piece so reticle in the eyepiece is always remain in the intermediate image plane so you can easily identify this and then the bottom lens element of the eyepiece if these contaminants are fuzzy and out of focus then again look for near the surface that is part of the illumination planes like condenser top lens where generally dust and dirt often accumulate the exposed eyepiece lens element many times it get contaminated uh, from the eyelashes and then objective front lens usually fingerprint smudges uh, might be there now important points often overlooked by the novices the intensity of the illumination should not be controlled through opening and closing of the field diaphragm or the condenser aperture diaphragm and not by shifting the condenser axially with respect to the optical center of the microscope i have seen many of the people they have misconception about this it should only be controlled either through the using neutral density filters that is placed uh, into the light path or by reducing the voltage to the lamp now i hope that you find this video uh, useful for you so thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for my next video